Hey there, Global here, presenting part 3 of our 001 networking co-op tutorial. Now that we have clients connecting to the server, we can dive into establishing online sessions. So the way online games work is there are two or more instances of the same game running at the same time. Any player input that happens has to trigger the same action on all instances of the game. So if a player presses the left key to walk left, it will trigger their actor to move left on their own game, and then it needs to also trigger the actor to move left on the other instances of the game. We accomplish this in 001 by using what are called network messages. They're kind of like custom events, but there are some differences. So just to give a brief rundown here, you're either going to be sending these network messages from the server to clients or from a client to the server. You cannot send them between clients. The parameters on the right here, this data is provided by the sender, the one sending the network message. And the actual script will be executed on the recipient, the one receiving the network message. I'll try to give an example here. So let's say we want a message box to pop up on the server with a value a client gives it. So essentially we're sending a private message from the client to the server. So to do this, let's create a network message and call it send message. We'll have one parameter and call it sent message. Inside the script, it's just going to run a message box event and in the body of the message, it's just going to display the value of the sent message parameter. That's it for prepping the network message. Now we just need a way to trigger it. So let's go into the connect interface, copy one of the fields, and call it send message. Then on the activated trigger of the field, let's create a local variable called input text. I'll throw in a once branch in an input box event using that input text local variable we created. Then we can use our send message network message. Now all your network messages are going to have this client ID field. This is really only relevant when sending from the server to a client. So when a client is sending something to the server, you can just leave this at zero. The value in the field is going to be ignored anyways. Now if we were sending this from the server, you can leave this at zero to send network messages to all connected clients, or change it to a different number to send it to a specific client. The first client to join the server will get assigned to client ID 1, the next one will get 2, and so forth. As far as I'm aware, there is no way to send these to more than one specific client at a time. So let's say I wanted to send this to client 4 and 9. I don't think you can do that with a single network message. It's either you send it to one of them or all of them. So we'll leave client ID at 0, and set the sent message to the input text local variable. Lastly, I'll reset the interface. And just so you know, the once branch and reset interface events here, not sure if they're absolutely necessary, but I'm always in the habit of using them so that fields can't get activated multiple times before the script finishes. So all we need to do now is get the connect interface to come up for the client. By going into the introduction system trigger and adding the show hide interface event after the client successfully connects to the server. Now we'll test it. We can click on the field we just created, type in a message, and we can see that it did send to the server successfully. So that is a quick example of how network messages work. Again, the parameters were specified by the sender, in this case the client, and the script executed on the recipient, which in this case is the server. So from this send message test, you might have noticed that it was a direct network message from the client to the server. But what we're wanting is communication from a client to another client. Since there is no way to directly send network messages between clients right now, we have to get a little creative and use the server as a middleman. The best way to understand this is to separate network messages into two categories, client requests and server responses. Network messages between a client and a server is a request. You're asking the server to do something. Then the server has a list of response network messages containing scripts that will trigger on the appropriate client. The network messages from the server are a response to a client's request. Because of this, you will need two network messages for every action. 
If you want to sync an actor's movement between the host and the guest, it has to send one network message to the server requesting the sync, and then a second network message being the server's response, which then gets sent to the appropriate client needing the sync. Now this can easily get cluttered and feel messy having two network messages for every little thing you want to sync. So what I like to do is have one and only one network message being sent from the client to the server. I call this network message client request. And the way it works is it will have one parameter called command text. And when using the network message in scripting, you will type out a string of text that will act as a command. The script will look at the command and decide what server network message needs to be sent. Now, maybe you're thinking creating your own command language is a bit overcomplicated for this, but I think it's cleaner than the alternative, and you'll just have to keep watching to see what I mean. So briefly, I want to go over the commands I came up with. It's a very simple command language that's super straightforward. So here's an example of one. Sync, x movement, host, negative one. You can probably already guess what this does, but I just want to go over the syntax I came up with to maybe give you some ideas for your own, or you can just copy mine. The first part of the string is the word sync. The first part indicates the category of command. From there, when the server processes this, it knows you're trying to sync something, but that's not enough info to go off of. So the second part of the command that shows X movement is the subcommand, letting the server know we want to sync the X movement of an actor, but which actor? Well, it can figure this out with the third part of the string, host. This is the parameter of the subcommand. In this case, the actor named host that is getting its X movement changed. But it won't know what to change the X movement to, which brings us to the last part of the command, negative one, which is another parameter of the subcommand. Altogether, we're telling the server we want to sync the X movement of the host actor to negative one. So it's just a main command with subcommands and or parameters separated by spaces. Now let me show you how the server will actually process these commands. In the script for the client request, we'll use a multi-comparison branch. The expression we're looking at will be an element in a collection, but not a pre-existing global collection, one that we generate from a string of text. So we click the use value box, then we click split into collection, and from here we can create a temporary collection just to be referenced here. And the collection will get generated from a string of text and split up into different elements by a delimiter. So the text will be the command text parameter, and the delimiter is just a space, because if you remember from the example, I had one space in between each part of the command. And for the first multi-comparison branch, we're going to be looking at the first part of the command, so entry number one. And the values we'll be expecting are connect and sync. So if the first part of the command equals connect, it will go here. We can create a subscript for each one so it doesn't get too cluttered. I'll label this one connect. And here we'll be able to do the same thing using a multi-comparison branch to check the command. So we can copy the first one and make changes to it. This one will check the second part of the command, so we'll change this one to a two, and there's only two words it can be, host or join. Now if the command equals connect host, then there's a few things that will happen. It will generate a password, add an entry to the online sessions collection, then send the password to the host who requested this and move them to the waiting for guest interface where they can see their password and be able to give it to their friend. So let's start with generating the password. We can make a local variable called generated password, then use a variable operation to set generated password. We'll just set it to a random number between 100,000 and 999,999 because in this case I'd like it to be a six digit password. After this, I want to store the password along with the client ID of the host in the online sessions collection so we can look for this data later when a guest tries to join a game. So this is going to be similar to the command text where we can separate the string into a collection and look at each part. So each entry in online sessions will have the following. Session password, host client ID, and guest client ID with a pound symbol in between each piece of data. But when a game is first hosted and the guest hasn't joined yet, the guest client ID won't be recorded in the entry yet. It will just have the session password and the host client ID. So let's go ahead and store this data now. So we're going to add two collection, the collection being online sessions, and the value will be a text combine. Text one is the generated password, and text two will be another text combine. Text one of this text combine is the pound symbol, 
and text2 is the network message client ID, which is the client ID of the person who initially sent the client request. Lastly, for this connect host command, we have to send the password back to the client and pull up the waiting for guest interface for that client. We'll of course do this with a network message. We'll call this one send password to host and have it only send from the server to clients. Give it one parameter, send password. In the script, it will set the online password variable to what the sent password parameter is equal to. Turn off the main interface and turn on the waiting for guest interface. Let's get back to the client request network message, go into the connect subscript, and after the add to collection event, we can now add our new send password to host network message. Now this is where the client ID is actually relevant. It's a network message being sent from the server to a client. We want to send this to the client hosting the game, who sent the initial request. So we can use the network message client ID again for this, and the sent password will be our generated password local variable we set earlier in the script. On the waiting for guest interface, I just need to make one change. I want this password field to return the value of the online password variable, and we can use a text combined to give some better instruction to the player. Then on the connect interface, I need to trigger the host game field to send the request to the server. So I'll use our client request event, keep the client ID at zero because the field gets ignored when sending from a client to a server, and I'll type out connect host. So now when I test the game, on the client, I can click host game, and you can see a password gets generated and given back to me, so I can give that to my friend to join. Of course that last part doesn't work yet, but we'll implement that next time. So like the video if you're feeling generous, and subscribe if you want to see more of these double one tutorials. See you in the next one.